Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today we have the week 3 game of Sam Mann's Black Crusade, his online Conquest LCG competitive league. The spring 2016 season is well underway and as our players are deciding whether or not they want to keep their opening hands note that at the bottom of our screen we have Seth Rosen playing as Urian Rackarth. He's the gentleman who scored second during the Conquest LCG 2015 World Championship, and for today's game, he's up against Kugoth Plaguefather played by Troy Nordine. Both of these fine fellows I had the opportunity to meet at Worlds. Looks like Troy has decided to stick with his opening hand, and Seth instead decides to ditch. Note that Urian begins the game with initiative, Planet number one is going to be Yavarn, which forces both players to put a unit into play. Urian is a torture specialist, and one of his few advantages is that he begins the game with one more card than does Kugoth. Uh, he gets a discount for each torture event he plays, uh, whereas he pays a penalty, a premium, for each non-torture event. Uh, looks like in the opening hand here of Kugoth, we've got a smattering of economy units, and uh, not one but two copies of Slanesh's Temptation to potentially make the command weak, uh, Urian Rackharth's life a bit of a nightmare there. And of course, we also come across a copy of Fetid Haze, which is going to be great uh, for shifting a lot of damage uh, and then reassigning that as indirect damage damage off of the Plague Father himself. Uh, for Seth, his first action is to lay down a copy of the Economy Destroying Archon's Palace. It's unique, but you cancel a card or resource bonus. And then for Seth's hand, it's a lot of conventional fare, plus a couple Urian exclusive inclusions. He's got a copy of Visions of Agony, so for the modified cost of two, he can look at Kugoth's hand, and he'll know the full contents thereof. Of, he'll be able to discard any one card he would like. Uh, he's also got a copy of Baleful Mandrake, which is a 3-2 ranged unit. It's going to be great when combined with Hypex Injector. Note that this copy of Slanesh's Temptation means that this copy of Incubus Warrior was put into play for a grand total of three resources. And last but not least, something critically important for Urian Rackarth is that he was fortunate enough to come across a copy of his signature attachment. So this is the Icker Gauntlet, and after Seth plays a Torture Event card, you can exhaust your Warlord in order to replicate its effects, and you can pick new targets. So Visions of Agony could discard two cards, uh, power from Pain could result in two army units being sacrificed, and it looks like we see another two-cost, uh, well, augmented two-cost Void Pirate, this time positioned at planet number three. Uh, so, Seth has thus far invested two additional resources courtesy of Slanesh's Temptation, and, uh... Both of our players are currently on Skype. It seems as though Seth has passed. He's run out of resources, and now if you look, these Slith Mercenaries, two command icons versus two, but this is cheaper, one resource versus three, and this is one resource versus two resources, but it's another command struggle win here for Kugoth. So Kugoth is looking like he's in a pretty damn good position economically. Uh, Yuri and Rackarth is going to be heavily incentivized to show up at planet number five to try to remove the Slanesh's Temptation from that planet, but unfortunately for him, uh, Troy has a second copy of the Temptation in his hand. Let's see, Kugoth could go to planet number one to win that one. Looks like Seth does indeed go to planet number five. Kugoth is going to show up at planet number one, so he's going to add a an icon of each color to his victory display. Archon's Palace is going to be shutting off the bonus associated with planet number two. So Urian is only going Going to be winning a couple of resources for command, although he'll have the opportunity to steal a resource upon triggering that battle ability, and it looks like uh, Troy 
instead got a resource, a card, and another resource, and uh, looks like that's it. So a total of one card and two resources for him, and Urian normally doesn't run a whole hell of a lot of units, and something Troy uh, stumbled across here is a copy of Archon's Terror. So it looks like uh, Seth is not off to a great start by any means. Our players are checking for actions here at planet number one. Seth and Troy are thus far both undefeated up to this point in the tournament. Urian's won two matches matches in a row, and the same can be said for Kugoth Plaguefather, looks like now we see that copy of Visions of Agony, and unfortunately it's going to be played uh, for two resources, and its effect is not going to be doubled, so let's see. Uh, Troy shows his hand to Seth. Seth chooses to discard a copy of Slanesh's Temptation, and that was a very wise move for him. So Urian normally plays a little bit longer game on average, and uh, he definitely could still turn this one around. He's got some command units. He's about to get rid of this copy of Slanesh's Temptation. So let's see what exactly it is that Seth can do to just get back in the game. That's going to be a red, green, and blue icon added to Kugoth's victory display. And uh, looks like the earliest we could see a victory is going to be our current planet number three through those red material type icons. Uh, so it's going to be up to Seth to at the very least wall off his opponent uh, here at Karnath, the trigger the battle ability of any planet planet, and uh, Osus 4, a battle won there, means that Yuria not only removes Slanesh's temptation from that planet, but it's going to be minus one resource for Troy, plus one resource for Seth. An HQ phase passes us by, that's four resources and two cards for each player. Planet number one is going to be fair in the route, a target non-warlord unit planet, and planet number five is now going to be Planum, which which allows you to move units. Planet number three is going to be Taurus, which is going to be a priority destination here for Urian, because if you win a battle and you control fewer units than your opponent, uh, you could draw three cards, three resources, and... Uh considering two command icons matches two command icons, it's not as if you're throwing away a command struggle that your opponent might be winning. Urian picks up his uh, signature Icker Gauntlet. There's an Incubus Warrior now residing at planet number four, played by Troy, and looks like we've got another copy of Fetid Haze in a uh, Kugoth's hand here, so he's going to be able to take a hell of a lot of damage. Urian doesn't necessarily specialize in dealing damage out to warlords, but with that Icker Gauntlet, uh, let's say if Urian is at a planet by himself, like let's say he shows up at uh, Planum, you've got an action window prior to attacking, and uh, what you can do is you can use an action to, like you play a torture event, you can use an action to exhaust your warlord, double the effect of that event, Urian can't take a combat turn, you come to the end of a combat round, you ready, and you wash, rinse, and repeat. So you could do that with Power from Pain, you could do that with uh, Rakarth's Experimentations, and uh, that could allow you a fantastic opportunity to copy a shitload of events, and if you've got a Hypex Injector on a Baleful Mandrake, then you're getting in extra ranged attacks, you're uh, doubling events, it's a pretty potent combination, and uh, a Baleful Mandrake with Hypex Injector in the right situation could deal out even enough damage to kill off Kugoth, though Fetid Haze could definitely interfere. So, a couple important things happened here. Slith Mercenary got purchased at planet number 2 by Seth. There's now a Slith Mercenary at planet number 5 by Seth. Planet number one, both players show up, which is very interesting indeed, and this kind of sucks for poor Urian, uh, because Urian does not have initiative at uh, planet number one, so that means it's looking likely that he's going to end up taking a swing of three directly to the face. Archon's Palace is going to shut off the command bonus of planet number one, and it looks like that's going to be two cards and a resource for Seth at planet number two. Uh, nothing for either player at three couple of resources for Kugoth at four, and one card, one resource for Seth at planet number five. <clears throat> So, at this point, we've got three copies of Power from Pain, which Urian is readily going to be able to replicate, uh, but in order to do that, it comes at the cost of exhausting him as a Warlord unit, so he might be able to kind of clear the board of uh, enemy army units, like uh, if he were to do a double Power from Pain now, he'd be able to essentially force the sacrifice of all of these, uh, but it would still be 
be a little bit suboptimal, and it's looking like things are getting pretty decent pretty quickly for Urian here. Urian did manage to shield against a swing of three incoming from the Incubus Warrior, so he took one point of damage, and now Kugoth is uh, also dealing a point of damage to Urian. I would not be shocked to see Power from Pain used by Urian and then be doubled by the Icker Gauntlet, albeit at the cost of taking one additional point of damage, because if that happens, it's going to be a sacrificed Slith Mercenary and Incubus Warrior, and if that's the case, then things have turned right around for Seth, where all of a sudden, if these two units disappear from the face of the Traxxas sector, then he's actually got a uh, relatively significant advantage here against his opponent. So Urian does indeed take an additional point of damage, and now I can only imagine that, yes, that's going to be power from pain, and I can only imagine that Urian is going to be exhausting uh, in order to double that effect, and that's going to be both army units being sacrificed. Uh, unless you Urian decides not to do so, but it looks like that is the case. Slith Mercenary is gone. Incubus Warrior is going to be gone. We're going to come to the come to the end of a com we're going to come to the end of a combat round uh both of our players are going to ready up their warlords Urian is going to retreat Kugoth is going to end up winning that planet he'll have the opportunity to rout an enemy unit and interestingly enough he decides to pick an incubus warrior so this is going to be two red material type icons in Kugoth's victory display and interesting that he decided to rout a unit that was outside of his earliest possible victory condition, which makes it like if Urian sends himself to planet number one to block off his opponent's win, uh, then he's going to be bringing this Incubus Warrior with him, whereas previously the Incubus Warrior could have simply sat uh, here at planet number two. So perhaps that goes to show that Kugoth is thinking of sending himself to planet number two now that he has such a low unit count, and as we go through an HQ phase... Note that our new fifth planet is going to be the Healing World Iridial, so that would be a potentially great destination for Urian. Uh, he'll drop off the Incubus Warrior at that planet, but he'll show up, he can double in event, and then uh, he'll eventually end up winning that battle. He could even retreat at the end of combat with that Incubus Warrior, and then have Urian sit there and just double torture events to his heart's content. Uh, until he does finally decide to win that battle and remove all damage from him. Looks like Troy has already passed on actions. He's got a Zinch's Firestorm, two Fetid Haze, and a Promise of Glory. He's also got an Archon's Terror, but he really doesn't have any army units to speak of whatsoever. And looks like Seth is just absolutely walling off planet number one. He's got a Warlock Destructor, a nice 3-4 for the mere investment of two resources. That Baleful Mandrake can attack at range for three. And and, uh, I guess let's think really hard about this one. If Kugoth shows up alone at this planet, he takes, uh, well, let's say Zinch's Firestorm kills the Baleful Mandrake. He takes five points of damage. He could kill a Slith Mercenary, uh, potentially, with Fetid Haze. I think it's entirely possible that Kugoth might be able to win planet number one if uh, Seth didn't decide to send his own warlord to planet number one. But Kugoth does decide to do the conservative thing to go to planet number two, Urian decides to do the conservative thing himself and show up at planet number one. Archon's Palace is going to be shutting off presumably the card bonus of planet number two, seeing as how Kugoth already has an incredible 10 resources, and it looks like Seth is just going to be winning a total of two, uh, sorry, three cards and two resources from command. So Troy has 11 resources, he's got a lot of nasty tricks at his disposal, and it looks like, unfortunately for Urian's sake, uh, Kugoth is going to be able to trigger Taurus uh, to draw himself three cards, but it definitely looks like uh, Troy is not going to be winning the game this round, and this is going to be the first work World added uh, to Urian's victory display, and Urian is in dire need of resources here because he's only got two resources, but he's got an incredible eight cards, and once we move through our HQ phase, that's only going to be four additional resources for Urian, and I guess fortunately for him, he does have this rogue trader, but... 
let's kind of check things out here. Karnath is going to be won by Seth, so he can either heal, he can move a unit, he can steal a resource, uh, he can't really trigger Taurus, but those are his options. So is he going to be healing his Warlord, or is he going to be stealing a resource or moving a unit? Uh, the only thing he could really move to the world with Kugoth to harass that unit is this Warlock Destructor, which definitely isn't exactly spectacular, so I'll just be curious to see what all Seth decides to do. Uh, he's got a copy of his signature event in hand, Rackhearth's Experimentations, where you name a card type, your opponent has to discard a card of that type or deal a point of damage to their Warlord that's replicatable by uh, the Icker Gauntlet, so it can add up to a significant amount of damage pretty quickly. You could name something like support, and then your opponent will either have to discard a support or shield that uh, damage. Uh, looks like Kugoth ends up winning the battle at planet number two. He draws three cards for himself, and uh, Urian has now been cleansed of damage uh, thanks to triggering Iridial's battle ability with Karnath. So let us reassess victory conditions here as we move through an HQ phase. That's going to be one red and one blue icon for Seth. So he he could win as early as, I guess, it's going to be planet number four if he picks up a red. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I misspoke. It'll be planet number three if he wins the next three planets in line, then he'll win through green icons. And in regard to blocking off Kugoth, he'll have to make sure that Kugoth doesn't win at planet number one. And uh, the same thing goes with planet number four. So Kugoth is either going to have to win it now or forever hold his peace, perhaps. Kugoth tosses out promise of glory, a nice early deploy stall, and doesn't that about suck? Siren Zithlex at planet number one, three cost, two command icon, unique, Dark Eldar loyal army unit from the core set. Now, any units that the 15 resource-possessing Kugoth puts into play, well, sorry, deploys at planet number one, uh, they're going to be entering play exhausted, and really the only thing he's going to be able to do in regard to uh, anything he can conjure up for combat is going to be just events. He doesn't have any army units. He's got a Void Pirate. He's got Rogue Trader. For more deploy stall, he does another copy of Promise of Glory, but he doesn't have any cultists to speak of. So I suppose it's possible that Kugoth may commit himself to planet number one. Uh, Urian might show up at planet number one, and Kugoth may have just a tide of uh, cultist tokens to kind of try and help him win that battle, but tokens are definitely not the most formidable units in the world, especially if you've got a copy of Warp Storm in your hand. And uh, I just think it's a little bit of a shame here, I guess, that Warp Storm, I mean, it's good for the sake of balance in this game, but you cannot use Warp Storm during the deploy phase, and uh, man, oh man, that would be one hell of a time to do so. So I think if Urian goes to planet number one, something we could see happen is Warp Storm hit Urian's HQ if, uh, like, let's say Kugoth, all right, Kugoth decides to send himself to planet number one, I was going to say if they end up being a large number of Dark Eldar and, you know, neutral and Eldar units in Urian's HQ, that would be a fantastic opportunity for Warp Storm to just expunge a whole hell of a lot of armies all in one fell blow, but let's see what all happens here. Rogue Trader at Planet 4, Void Pirate at Planet 3. Uh, we're going to see Urian win command at Planets 1 and 3, so that's going to be a total of 3 cards and 2 resources for Seth. Um... Note that, unfortunately, he does not have quite enough for his Clavax War Leader, uh, but he's going to be able to do the Power from Pain trick if he wants, and it's army units, not tokens. These cultist tokens are going to be spared, but it's going to be a dead Void Pirate and a dead Rogue Trader. Uh, looks like Troy actually got a fair bit of income indeed, so it's going to be... I think this planet's resource bonus was shut off, uh, but, like, it's a maximum possible 
possible one card, one resource for Troy from Planet 4, and uh, one card, two resources from Planet 2. So let's see what exactly is happening here. It's going to be the initiative token in Kugoth's possession, but until he takes a large amount of damage, he's not really going to be able to do much of anything. We've got Rackarth's experimentations, uh, just one copy thereof, but we've got a copy of Searing Brand, which is deal three unpreventable damage to a target non-warlord unit, uh at a planet with your warlord your opponent can discard two cards to prevent that effect but really the best target are these dumbass cultist tokens and those scarcely matter but Archon's Terror removes this ready warlock destructor and now it's going to be up to Seth to remove Kugoth from this planet and uh, he's going to have to chew through two copies of Fetid Haze in order to do so if Troy ends up winning this planet then he's going to be able to take this one home uh, Seth has got three, four, five different shield cards in hand, and then a two-value shield card, so he's going to be able to shield away a lot of damage, but Fetid Haze is definitely going to hurt. Zinch's Firestorm is going to hurt. Like, we could see Warp Storm and both Fetid Hazes, and we could, on top of that, see a five-resource Zinch's Firestorm, so the ability for Kugoth to output damage at the moment is just absolutely absurd, and of course, because Urien is not uh, any Eldar faction warlord, there's no nullify to speak of. So it's all going to come down to, I guess, can Urien endure this much damage? Interestingly, right off the bat, we see Warp Storms. That is going to be four dead cultist tokens. That's going to be two points of damage on uh, Kugoth. Uh, like, okay, yeah, so Seth caught it before I had to remind him. Units with attachments don't take damage from Warp Storm. So, of course, Urien is going to be spared. Uh, looks like Promotion is going to spare the Baleful Mandrake, perhaps, from taking taking a point of damage. Warlock Destructor is going to end up taking two points of damage, uh, and that is going to be a dead copy of Slith Mercenaries, a dead Void Pirate, and now things are looking awfully goddamn grim for Seth because this Warp Storm is already clearing out a lot of units. The instant that Kugoth hits six points of damage, that's going to be a lot of outgoing damage from Fetid Haze, and uh, he can essentially do that twice. You can only assign as much indirect damage to a unit as it has remaining hit points, but considering Kugoth's reaction, considering Zinch's Firestorm, and uh, considering a couple of promotions for additional shielding, there's just a lot of damage that uh, Kugoth can finish dealing out here. So, like, Kugoth could take a swing at the Baleful Mandrake and then move a point of damage directly to this Incubus Warrior and then outright kill it because you cannot shield against move damage, and uh, things are just look like looking awfully grim indeed for Seth. Uh, this copy of Icar Gauntlet is actually erroneously exhausted. It shouldn't be uh, exhausted at all, not that it really matters, but I guess the coolest thing about Icar Gauntlet is that you're exhausting uh, the Warlord as opposed to the attachment. But let's see, Kugoth is going to do an attack, and he's going to end up shifting a point of damage. I suppose if it were me, yep, I'd move a point of damage to that Incubus Warrior, and uh, Rackhearth's Experimentations is going to be discarded as shields, regardless of what he was attacking. I think if it were me, I'd be directing my fire at that Baleful Mandrake, just because it's such a squishy, high-damage target. Siren Zithlex ends up adding two points of damage to Kugoth. Now it's going to be Urien taking a swing, and that's two additional points of damage on Kugoth. He's now at five. Uh, the interesting thing here is this Warlock Destructor or Baleful Mandrake. If it attacks, that's going to be three on Kugoth. And unless we see a Zinch's Firestorm used to drop that down to one point of manageable damage... Um, well, I guess actually what we could see is Kugoth has initiative, he'll be able to attack first, he'll drop himself down to 4 damage, and then you could shield with a promotion against an incoming attack of 3 to hit your 6 hit point threshold, then you could use Fetid Haze, and then that could be a couple of points of damage, a uh, third point of damage, 4, 5 points of damage, and then it's going to be up to Seth to shield, or otherwise those units are going to be killed. 
And I do not favor Seth's odds in this one. Seth has done a remarkable job with Yuri and Rackharth thus far, but it's looking like it just might not quite be in the cards for him today. So he takes a swing. That's going to be a dead copy of the Baleful Mandrake, thanks to moving damage. And now, what exactly is he going to be directing his attack against? Uh, looks like it was Yuri and Rackharth seemed to be the target there. So, Siren Ziflex takes a swing, Kugoth Plague Father hits six hit points, well, sorry, six damage tokens, and there's that Fetid Haze, you remove all damage from your Warlord or target Nurgle unit, and then you've got to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you have to reassign it among army units, not uh, non-army units. So, interestingly, that was uh, enough damage assigned to Siren Ziflex that it's killed, and uh, now that that means one point of damage on that Warlock Destructor. Kugoth takes three points of damage, and now Kugoth is going to take an additional two points of damage from Urian Rakarth, and what really sucks about this is there's that other copy of Fetid Haze in hand. What it can do is it, even though it can't reassign indirect damage to Urian himself, Kugoth can still remove all of the damage from him because it's treated as basically two different uh, card effects. You remove all damage and then you try to do the other thing. If you can do X but you can't do Y, that's fine because you've already resolved X. Kugoth takes a swing. He moves a point of damage onto the Warlock Destructor. The Warlock Destructor is going to be destroyed. And now what exactly are we going to see here? Seth has already used all of his copies of Rakarth's experimentation to heal. We come to the end of a combat round. Uh, all of our players are going to refresh. And interesting, see, this was a little bit suboptimal. I, well, I guess you wanted to use your action. Like, I guess if Seth would have had... Uh, no matter what, if you'd have had Rackhearth's experimentations, you'd have had a sufficient number of shield cards in hand to make sure that you weren't killed by that effect, so that is a little bit suboptimal. Kugoth ideally would have taken a swing, moved that point of damage onto Urian and then attacked, but I suppose at this point Troy is just playing it better safe than sorry. I think he's being a little bit unnecessarily uh, skittish in regard to his gameplay, but if you can seal out a win against, you know, the uh, individual who took second place during the 2015 World Championship, then you definitely do so. And our gentlemen were on Skype, so it looks like that is it. That's the GG, and that is going to be good game right there. So, congratulations. Congratulations to Troy Nordine for managing to beat Seth Rosen. There was absolutely nothing that poor Urian could have done at this point. Kugoth could have swung for one. Urian could have maybe shielded it, but Urian would have attacked back. That would have been two points of damage on Kugoth, and Kugoth would have been able to attack for one. He would have shifted one point of damage off of him, and he still had multiple shield cards in hand, including that two shield value Zinch's Firestorm. So, unfortunately, it looks Looks like Urian Rackharth was not able to win this one, but it was a spectacularly well-played game on the part of Seth. All the same, a Hypex Injector definitely could have made a bit of a difference for him, but Kugoth was able to acquire so many resources that a Zinch's Firestorm easily could have destroyed a Baleful Mandrake, so... Unfortunately, Urian was not able to win this one. Brad Andrews recently held an AMA in which he said he wishes he'd have added another torture event for Urian in the Warlord cycle to make him more viable, and I'm just uh, damned curious to see what exactly that's going to be, because it's going to be coming out during the Death World cycle. So, my dear viewers, thank you so much for watching, and as always... If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, as ever you're encouraged to share this content, because the more engagement these videos receive, the more people end up being exposed to Conquest, they may give the game a try, join our community, and of course, the greater we are in number, the bigger message we send to Fantasy Flight Games, telling them to continue to support this fantastic product. If you ever want to get
get in touch with me, I would encourage you to do so on Facebook or on Twitter, and if you ever feel any inclination whatsoever to help support the Hive Tyrant, I would be honored, humbled, and deeply appreciative were you to make even a small contribution to my Patreon. Even a dollar really goes just the extra mile in showing that you care, that you appreciate this content, and, uh... All of it just goes to help improve the audio and video quality of the content I produce. So, once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.